Hi, and welcome to another Inside Athletics brought to you by the IAAF. I'm your host, Atto Bolden. We're taking on a junior theme this week because we're at the World Under-20 Championships in Bitgosh, Poland. My guest today is a young man who broke a record in the United States that was there since 1985, Noah Lyles. Noah, Hi. welcome to Inside Athletics, and happy birthday. Happy 19th <laughs> birthday you, to thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about the U.S. Olympic trials because you set some history there. Um, first of all, did you know who Roy Martin was, the person who had the 200-meter record before you? No, I didn't. You know me, uh, when we got back to the house, we were like, my brother's really big into stats, and he was just like, who is this guy? And we right. was like, I don't know. So we went online, and we started looking him up, and we just saw he, you know, he, um, what he did. It was pretty impressive what he did. We heard that he's still coaching, so that's really cool. Yeah, he's had the record for a while, has Roy Martin. Um, I think the most important thing about Roy Martin is he used to own Michael Johnson in high school. So that, that's, that's the thing that really, makes him, uh, that really makes him spectacular. So, okay, so you go to the Olympic trials. Do you have expectations going in? Because um, you started once you got into the rounds. You, you won your first round. You won your semifinal. You guys were sort of beating up on the pros and creating headlines for yourself. When you went into the Olympic trials, did you feel like, look, I'm good enough to get third, I'm good enough to make the team, or you were just going in there to see what you could do? No, I was definitely, uh, me and my brother, we tell the story, we've been telling it all year this year, you know, four years ago, we were watching 2012 opening ceremonies, and it was like, yo, we can be going there. We can be going to the Olympics. I don't know about winning the Olympics, but we right. can go to the Olympics. So our goal, like, for four years was just training. Everything we did was to get for the Olympics, and my mom would start putting the teams together. We started getting chiropractors and massage therapists. Wow. Yeah, she um, even um, uses our uh, a, a sports psychologist that she used to use um, back in the day, and now she works with me, and we definitely were um, – I was talking to her all throughout the trials. So, But we, despite that, though, I saw a tweet that you put out not too long ago where you said, I'm 19 today, and if you told me four years ago you know, that I'd have been fourth in the Olympic trials, I'd have laughed. So how is that if you, you know, you've, you've literally been planning for four years to be at this point, and yet still it amazes you? Why is that? Yeah, it was actually 19 <laughs> years ago, but uh, it's, it's crazy amazing because I didn't understand all the things that needed to go into making the trials, having the right people, having the right team, having the right mindset right. at that age. So I was just like, as each year I'm just gaining new knowledge and I was just like amazed that, wow, I had a goal and now we're at the end of this goal and it's like you don't even want it to end, but you have to end it because you got to go on to the next part of your life. I want to ask you about that Olympic trials final. You had a very good lane draw. And while everybody else was picking the other high school in the race, I said, yeah, but Lyles is the better lane draw. He's going to be able to see everybody outside of him. Um, did you, I mean, it, it had to be a no-pressure race for you because, look, if you'd gotten eighth, it said, hey, the high schooler made the final, he got eighth. Did you, did you put a lot of pressure on yourself to do well in that race? No, I don't try to put a lot of pressure on myself going into races because you know, I feel like pressure kind of stops you from running as fast as you can. I, I was definitely excited to see the lane draw because I had LaShawn on the outside right. and then I also had Mike out there so, and I knew Mike was going to get out. Of course. Because he's, uh, he's run away from me a few times <laughs> and I had to go get him a, right. uh, quite a bit. But I was definitely excited and I was just um, talking to my sports psychiatrist and we were like, yo, this going into this race, you're only focusing on you. Right. You can't control them. So going into this race, you perk focus on your perfect race. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did going in. I was just thinking, uh, we was at the blocks and I was just thinking, don't even worry about them. All we do is run how we run. So you cross the line, you break the record, 20.09. Um, is that close to what your goal was for the year? What were your time targets when the season started? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, my times are pretty high. I like to keep them high so I don't get bored in the middle of the season. So it was 19 season. what? It was 1975. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, nah, but um, our uh, training kind of got messed up a lot this year. Um, mm -hmm. our co my coach got in a car accident, okay. so um, we had a long break. I, uh, my brother got injured, so we were focusing on that a lot through the school year. Right. And I was graduating high school, so you know, had all these other influences. But our biggest goal was to trying to 
keep training through all of it, but um, some things definitely got in the way. So now I feel like I'm starting to hit my peak now, right. com um, coming off of the Olympic trials and going into these juniors, I feel like I'm getting closer to my peak. You mentioned your brother, let's talk about him for a little while. He seems to be your number one fan as well, but he is a talent in his own right. Um, did he follow you into the sport or did you guys get into the sport together? No, nah, we definitely got into the sport together. Our parents used to run at both at Seton Hall, my dad used to run professionally, and right. you know we've been surrounded by track ever since. Going to track meets at the University of Florida, to, right. and just everything. So we uh, around twelve years old. We both did it. It's a good age to get in. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he uh, not too young. <laughs> nah, and uh, he actually did the four and the eight, and he hated it, so he backed out. <laughs> and I wasn't even a runner. I was a high jumper. Oh wow. Yeah, I, uh, I still high jump. I kind of stopped now because. What's your PR? Uh, six eight. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I, I'm taking a few L's to Grant, but I got one. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, I got one win. So right, right. It's all good. But yeah, he came back in eighth grade, and ever since then we kind of just kept having it going. Got the goal and just been pushing forward ever since. Now, being from Virginia, you don't have to look very far to find inspiration. Um, and certainly, even in your event with LaShawn Merritt, is that somebody who in that area is sort of a lar larger than life figure because of what he's done? Who have been your influences uh, in the sport? I'm going to be very honest. Go ahead. Uh, throughout my whole life, you know, we've been surrounded by Olympians. We're very close to the Clarks, um, um, Joetta Clark, right. JJ and Joe, Company, JJ, right? Yeah, we're really close to them. Mm -hmm. and. So Olympians, or they don't it's really. Not a big deal. Exactly. It's not a big deal. You've known Olympians your whole life. Exactly. We right, uh, right. just don't really get. In, and um, truthfully, there are people out there who impress me. I have total respect for Allison Felix, especially what she did in that 400 right. at the Olympic trials. I was just, even if she didn't run, run, win the two, I right. was just like, that four was so impressive. Absolutely. You didn't need to win that two. You've already grabbed the gold. I was, and Usain Bolt, total respect. Yes. Johan Blake, again, total respect. I mean, second fastest guy in the world, and nobody really <laughs> notices. They only right. see Usain Bolt. But again, just total respect. But I don't really put people on pedestals, because if you're putting people on pedestals, how are you going to face them when you get to the trials? That's a very good philosophy. Now, I look at your results at 100 and 200. There are a lot of people in this industry that look at you and say, he's, run he's running the wrong event. He's running one and two. What he should be running is two and four. So I know every sprinter hates the quarter mile, but how long do you think it's going to be before somebody sort of forces you to give the 400 really, really serious consideration? I truthfully don't know. I mean, it could come in a year, maybe t uh, 10 years. I right. mean, 10 years, that's, uh, that's how much you want to kick that can down the road. I mean, nobody, no sprinter wants to go to the You're not afraid of that quarter, though. I'm not afraid of it. It's just my brother has it. And okay. I, I mean, that's just more yeah, your competition. your brother doesn't run 2009, though. At least not yet. <laughs> he doesn't yet. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's just like, if he's running it, the, the way we've been working is like, if he takes the um, four and the two, and I take the 102, we meet up in the 200, I mean, that's a great show for everybody to watch. Correct. So, I mean, as of now, if I'm running fast in it, I don't need to move up. But, I mean, if, if the time comes and it's time to move up, I'll definitely move up. If you have done your career right and you retire at 30, what should your personal best be? I mean... Well, you said you wanted to run 1975 exactly. this year at age 19. So, I'm, I imagine these are going to be some pretty lofty numbers you're, yeah, you're going to give I mean, me here. If you saying saying both running 19, 19, I uh -huh. might as well go for that 18. <laughs> All right, there you go. What about the 100? 100, I, the only uh, vision I've really had about the 100 is I remember I had a dream and uh, I ran 10, I mean, uh, 941 there you go. in the trials. <laughs> So yeah, the trials, I, and, oh, yeah. And I well, was you could like, run those kind of times in Eugene, you know? Yeah. That's, that's the fastest straightaway in the world. Exactly. So I was just like, oh, well, it looks like I'll be running faster than 941. So when you're not on the track, you guys are into what? So you're 19 now, so got a girlfriend? No. <laughs> Ask me about six months later, I would say yes, but no, right. not right now. So when you're not on the track, what are the things that occupy your time the most? Truthfully, it's just we hang out with our team a lot. You know, we're really close. Me and my brother... Probably one of the closest siblings you'll probably find okay, out there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we're always hanging out, and even when we go out, we love to go to the movies. We love to, like, 
I love to jump around on trampolines. Like really? I used to do uh, acrobat. I was um, a gymnast and I just like love the trampoline. So sometimes I'll go to, you know, like places like those trampoline places where you just bounce around and stuff. Um, what are you going to study? What do you have aspirations to do career wise apart from track and field? I'm uh, very big in the arts. Uh, I love to draw. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, on the computer, we've been doing a lot of digital design. I've been, made a few things and I've, um, I just love pen and paper. I'm not really big on painting, but other than that, I love to design. I've uh, designed a few uniforms. One of the ones that you saw me run in the trials, the white one, yeah. I designed that. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, okay. we sent it to New Balance and they uh, made it for us. Very nice. So it, it was uh, really nice to be able to run in the trials in something I made. So that's definitely something I might think of going into the future. I might uh, try to get into designing um, athletic wear. So now you're at the under 20 world championships. Tell me about your mindset coming in here. You have to be confident based on how you've just performed at the US Olympic trials. But at the US Olympic trials, you weren't the favorite. You are a huge favorite here. <laughs> how much um, are you, if any, feeling the pressure? I wouldn't say I'm feeling the pressure. I'd f I feel like I'm more excited now because now I just come off that super big high right. and I want to do something again. So me and Mike have like been talking and we're just like eager to run. So now I'm just trying to um, perfect everything I can, get my body straight because I just, I just want to go as fast as I can now. And now that I know I got, um, I'm not in my best event. So that means there are people that can push me. Right. <laughs> because no, in high school, you know, you just don't get that push when you're kind of that high in the right. sport. Which event do you prefer? You run the 100 and the 200, but which one do you, which one do you feel you're better at and which one do you prefer? Because usually they're not necessarily the same thing. I love the 200. Right. I feel like I'm better at the 200 because I get to show my endurance and my speed at the same time. With the 400, you know, you're, you're kind of dying a little at that end. <laughs> so it's all about who can hold their pure strength the right. longest. But um, with this one, I get to be able to show both. Well, congratulations on breaking that record. I certainly enjoyed uh, covering your races at the Olympic trials and all the best here uh, in Poland. Thank you.